this john chapter 14 verse 1 it says john chapter 14 verse 1 so let not your heart to be troubled you believe in god believe also in me why should they say in you know, jesus says that when uh, and the jesus and god and the holy spirit they are in one but here he specifically says believe in god also believe in me so for the salvation for the eternal life a man should believe in god as also in believing in his son jesus christ because the god gift the eternal life in his son and the bible says if they don't believe either one of them some people they believe in the god they may not believe in jesus christ and they will not be have an eternal life some people they believe only in jesus not in the god and they will also will not have the salvation and they will not enter into god's kingdom but this is the word of god that we should believe in both of them, both of them so and um, and the disciples of jesus you know they have been so happy along with christ wherever jesus was going and everything was good almost in the ministry three years sometimes they say three and a half years and they need not to worry about anything about the family and another things but the next day they have simply follow jesus christ they have been so happy and they are doing it they need not do anything much so jesus was going and preaching the gospels in all the places and they accommodated him and they never bother about the food the water nothing at all cloth nothing at all everything was taken care of now jesus he says i will leave this earth so that's why he says to the disciples and let not your heart be troubled since i am going don't get troubled and you believe in god and believe in me so in all the things even on this earth there are so many things are happening to us and so many things are happening you know according not according to our wish and so many things are you know giving sometimes in problems and the difficulties we are going through even in this situation jesus jesus is telling believing in me and believing in the lord also that's what the way to see do be a certain thing we can do able to do overcome but certain thing we cannot overcome by ourselves so we need jesus christ you know and we need even god both of them so that's why the way we understand from this word and jesus even today is speaking to us the let not your heart be troubled rejoice in me believe in me and believe in the lord so that's what we have to do as a christians bias you know it's not our might or not our strength we can overcome but is by the holy spirit only so that's thing that you know the word of god is there here this makes us all off you know here so in john chapter 12 44 45 says then jesus cried out and said he who believes in believes not in me but in him who sent me again he says in the previous john chapter 12 he says that who he believes in me believe not in me but he believe in him who sent me so he was so specific because the people are seeing jesus christ he is doing all miracles and the wonders and certainly they will believe in him but the god the father is in the spirit maybe they may not even believe in him oh the jesus is here now for us for a healing go to him he will heal abi any problems we go to jesus and he will do it and we all pray only in the name of jesus to the father so so we need not to bother about the father there are some cult they say only jehovah no jesus and another cult only in jesus there is no god there are the people as a ministers 
they are there you know one day he called me when i went to my village near by town he wanted to see me badly i said why you wanted to see me badly then uh, you know he started asking me i'm going to be or other places for a ministry but you know why why should we because everything we do in the name of jesus why should we bother about the god why should i we just you know ask him so the jesus does everything he is a miracle worker god he is all sort of things he was talking to me but the bible says unless you believe in both of them and you will not have an eternal life you can believe anything what you want but certainly the the eternal life who is you know where is skept it not only the eternal life the judgment only jesus is going to judge you know there is an authority given everything to jesus christ it doesn't mean you can forget the authority who has given to him <laughs> jesus on this earth he never took anything glory for himself he says i have not come here for me to be glorified i have come here to reveal the father and they've got all the glory and the thing to go to the father as long as he lived as a man on this earth <laughs> so now everything that you know he said so that is a way that the faith should be in both you know god and jesus christ then only we can have a salvation otherwise we may if you don't believe in jesus christ believe only in god he may be an antichrist you know so that's the thing we always see we as he says when we and you know philip was asking learn that you say that you are the way in the truth and the life just show us the father then he said you are living with me for many years you don't know who i am what i am doing it and you are asking so when you see me you are seeing the father yes he is in me i am in him so it's always he made it a point that who is jesus christ and who is god and they are in one and then we have to believe in both of them so that's what we are here understand here and you know you know in john chapter 45 it says and the 45 verse it says and he who sees me sees him who sent me you know and who is believing in him and believe in the one who sent me and who sees me and who is seeing the father so where can i show you whom can i show you so for an example if it is the thing that you know like that god is a god and the man is a man you know god can become a man but the man cannot become a god for an uh, in a in a world way that if you see something else so also i already told you if the guy is a beggar he dressed like a king with a dress whether he is a beggar or he is a king he looks like a be- you know king he dressed in a king if you say he is a king whether he has a king's power whether he is in the you know he has a throne even though he looks like a king <laughs> can we consider him and he is a king no he is only a man he is a beggar he is a man the same way when god has revealed us through in the flesh and he in the form of a man then you look at him will you ever say you are a king? he is a god or a man if you say man he cannot be a god understand if you say you he is a man he cannot be a god a man cannot be a god but the god can be a man so the god revealed in his flesh in the form of this one but jesus is god even though he was in the form of a man but he is not a man you know so this is what it many times the people they question me how can you say he was a man he was a 100% man 100% god and they said to offended i said show them where is in the bible it says jesus is 100% man and god is 100% god how can he be 100% man can be 100% god the 100% god can become a man 100% man <laughs> but a man cannot be so what is the thing that people just look at the person jesus christ he has no sin he says in chapter you know tell me you know even uh, i think uh, the 12th chapter he says in the 8th chapter you know in john can anyone say that i am i am sin i have a sin 
And any man can say that I am a sin, I am a sin. He doesn't have a sin even though he is in the form of a man, he is a God. The God is only holy, no man can be holy. See, in all the things that we do not understanding, yes, we can understand, but uh, people of the world, he cannot understand. Oh, he is a man, as we are worshipping a man, and Christian also worshipping a man, but they don't know who is Jesus. Even the, you know, Islamists, even though the Quran is, the Quran, in Quran it's really clearly written that he is the one who will come and judge all the people. And he is the one that is one of the, you know, Holy Spirit in the Virgin. Everything was written there. But they don't believe that the things. And there's so many disciples who are witnessing Jesus Christ. And there's so many people they lived and they witnesses. Who is the man lived during the time of Muhammad who witnessed him? You know, even the Quran doesn't witness him. It talks about him that how many wives he has and how he married a life and how he was doing all the sinful things. It's all written in the Quran. But they believe in that, that guy. They don't want to believe in Jesus Christ. So this is the man, the, the worldly man. In John 10.30, I and my father are one. When, when Jesus was the father, they were one. How can we claim that he is a man? <laughs> so cannot be, yeah. So that's what we always see. In 29 words it says, My father who has given them to me is greater than all. And there the Islamia they say, what Jesus himself he said, the father is greater than me. Where it is told? Is it written like that? They put only the greater. Greater than me. So Jesus is telling then how can then he be a, you know, he can compare with the God? What the Bible says here, my father who has given them to me is greater than all. Overall is given to them, these people, and the, our father is a greater than, and that's what it says. Not greater than the Jesus Christ, this is not as written here. It does not say he is greater than me. So simply they don't read the Bible correctly, and just that they talk about all the things, oh, your Bible says, he says he's greater than me. So that's what, you know, I could see from here. In Matthew chapter 19, 27, Peter asked Jesus, now the point, okay, Lord, you are with me, and because we, you know, we can always have your grace and the mercy, we can somehow live, or we can go back to our old profession. <laughs> But it cannot be, because the God said, I will, when Jesus said to them, follow me, and uh, they followed him, leaving all his net, all this profession and the family, everything else, they left. Only Jesus said, I'll make you a fisher of man, not the fisher of fish, you know. So that's what he was using him. So, uh, here is the thing that, uh, you know, chapter 19, 27, Peter answered Jesus. We left all and followed you. That were, what shall we have? What, what are you kept for us? When the child asked that, come with me to the shop. First thing the child asked, what you will buy for me? <laughs> Depends upon whether the father says he will, the baby will accompany, and otherwise, you know, he will not go. Some noises, you know, the, the echo is coming. Okay, anyway. So, and Jesus said to them, Assuredly I say to you, those, you know, in the regeneration, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of His glory, you who followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Do you even imagine? Jesus told him that, you know, you will, you know, fisher of man. But what is the things that can't kept for them? The fisher of man. And when, when we think about how, what, what is can't kept for us, sinner like us, are we worthy? for everything. It's an awesome thing to see. He says, and God says that you are the royal priest, 
good. You know, you are the, yeah, you are the holy nation, the kingdom of such a thing that God says about the sinner, you know, like us. And he says that, um, you know, and um, when the regeneration, it says, not now, the God is a regeneration, the resurrection, like here is a regeneration. When the Son of Man sits on the throne of this glory, you who followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. An awesome thing. How these people, they got the reward just to follow him, grieving everything. That's right, that even that this, this is happening now also. When someone, you know, leave everything and follow him truthfully. God has something special kept for them. The Bible says that, you know, the, the wise man be like a, a light. And the people who make others into the belief of Jesus Christ or, or bring them into the salvation and they'll be shining like a star in the kingdom. That's what the Bible says. <laughs> in Tamil, you know, that's, they are like a light. And the people who bring soul into Christ, they will be stars. That so, and everyone who has left house, or brothers or sisters or a father or a mother, or a wife, or a children, or lands for my name's sake, shall receive a handfold and inherit eternal life. Now what the pastor say, what the minister say, the first is family. God is the first one on the wall, maybe the nameplate. <laughs> you know, they say second, oh, they say second. Second is the family, third is his ministry. Whose ministry? Third. The family ministry? <laughs> or a God's ministry? <laughs> what they call about the third is the ministry. Really, it is something one person was sitting and he told that he was to be sent to Nepal and other places. So it is in the you know, pastor's meeting. He was telling, I wasted all my time for 25 years. Now I understand what is a life along with my wife, along with my children, along with my grandson. So that means that 25 years to whom he served. <laughs> he say he lost, you know, he wasted his time. Whom he served. He may be doing some work for money. <laughs> Mm. So even he was uttering something about uh, I don't know because what he told, I don't know whether it's true or not. Even somebody asked him, Belikram, so when you come in the regeneration, suppose you're born again, born again, you know, he comes like a man, what you will prefer? And he told him it seems, so I didn't enjoy my family life, all my children. Now I won't serve like what I served. But I don't know whether it's true or not, that man he told me. I don't know from where he heard or something, where he spoke and other things. Even the one who came to our church, he was giving the first witness. And he said about 15 years I wasted my time. Because my calling is actually, it's a pastor. But I was, as a minister I was serving. Now that later I realized, Oh, it is not my calling. My calling is the pastor. Why he started his church now? What he thinks, if it is in the beginning, if you would have started the church, it would have been so much congregation, so much money and uh, all the blessing would have been there. Oh, I lost it. <laughs> now only I realized my calling is a minister, have a church, see, go around and you preach and for money. You know, what a sad thing to see about these people. They talk about serving God is a waste. 
it comes from the minister's voice what type of a ministers what they think about jesus and the ministry the apostles paul said they were been just giving their life for the sake of what for the sake of not for the family for not for the money for the people to be saved they they died really to save people and they have been you know they suffered so much then they enjoyed the life three and a half years along with jesus now they suffered so much for the sake of that's what jesus says for my sake you know here always the family family what's a family man but well, god has given a family to enjoy all the days and what about the sabbath the day you come and worship in the god's presence that is a family that will be blessed that is the word of god seek him first all the things are added to him if you seek the world where will it be added so he says anyone is left you know and he has shall receive a handful and inherit eternal life but many who are first will be lost and the last first what did mean exactly why it says that uh, the first one will be the last or the last one will be the first what it is so we were the first people in the generation maybe in the christians so the other people now they are saved later and they will be him first and we will be him last is it like that so what did it mean exactly you know so it immediately the thought came to me it cannot be everyone is saved when jesus comes and they will go whether there's a first or second no all the people after the christ everything will go first so that's what it mean the people who died in the olden days and they will rise only at the time of judgment so these people are supposed to be the killed for blanks to the kingdom of god all these israel people who believe in him and the people the name is written in the book of life they are the first one they are blanks to the god's kingdom but when they don't rise up when jesus comes the jesus comes when you know in the cloud only the death with jesus christ died with jesus christ will rise first that's we are so that what he says it says it very clearly you know it says and says mm, so the first will be the last and the last will be the first so we will be resurrected before the last people who are been first resurrected in the last days that it mean so that's what i could understand this so then where we say that it is written like that you know i can be yeah, this is the one we know even before the judgment jesus comes and resurrected the people they became the first one to enter into god's kingdom the other people they will not rise up till then only for the judgment time all the people of in the old testament their books are written in the you know book of life they will enter into god's kingdom the people who don't know god they will be judged according to their deeds and again the christians also will be judged <laughs> yes you know those who are not died with christ not been risen they are still in the grave christians they will also rise up on the last day then the, if their name is in the book of life then they will enter we have already they have entered if the name is in the book of life when jesus came then it have been entered these people are names are not written in the book of life even though they are christians because they have not accepted jesus christ submit to the word of god submit to the gospel of jesus christ it is written second thessalonians chapter 1 verse 8 i'll just read it later here it is written even i can read this you know here so how this resurrection is happens second thessalonians chapter so in flaming fire taking vengeance on those who do not know god and on those who do not obey the gospel of our lord jesus christ who are there not obeying the gospel jesus christians they know the bible and they come to church and they know the word of god but they don't want to accept and put on jesus christ by the baptism of repentance for the forgiveness they have not died with christ their name will land be there in the book of life 
those who died in Christ, their name will be in the book of life. So they will be also will be put into the hell fire. So in, a blame, in the flaming fire, they will be thrown into this one. This shall be, they, shall, this, they shall be punished with the everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. How serious the so-called Christians, they are so, say, they are very faithful to God, they are faithful to Jesus Christ, come to church, and even, but they don't want to obey to the gospel of Jesus Christ. What will happen? They will be, have an everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord. That's why we are giving a lot of Bible to the people. Let them know, at least we cannot argue with them. We cannot talk much time. We are, they don't want to have any stand with the King unless few people. And even they talk, stand, and they only argue. And you know, one of the things, one uh, Catholic man, and he was talking so much with uh, Sister Sarani and other people, I also went there afterwards. He was telling the truth of some years before our Catholicism, that was the, the first one. So he was talking all proud about the Catholicism. And about the baptism, he says, the Bible says, you and your family will be saved. So our children also saved, because they took baptism. <laughs> I told him, do you know what is baptism? He doesn't know. First of all, you know what is baptism, then you talk about your family to be saved. Like that. Without the repentance and without believing in Jesus Christ, where is the baptism man? And this small boy, Orion, he was just standing, he just kidding. Now look, your baptism is nullified, is rejected. If you don't properly take baptism according to the Bible, you end up in a hell. Simply he was talking. <laughs> I said like a big man standing there <laughs> by the side. He was talking to him and just went away. Then I told you, you, you know, you, you read Mark chapter 3, uh, so at least you know, Mark chapter 1, you know, everything was there, you know, about the, you know, John the Baptist, how he was given Baptist, how they were taking, to whom he was given, all sort of things without talking about this one. So a child cannot have anything at all, and uh, no repentance, no believing, how the child, it, it's, it's only drinking milk, so I just told him, he's not accepting it, so. And in the 10th verse it says, in the 2nd Thessalonians chapter 1, 10, when he comes in that day to be glorified in his saints and to be admired among all those who believe because our testimony among you was believed. So he will come with all his, you know, uh, you know, you know angels and this was the further judgment that is what that will happen where it is written in you know, verse 8 and 9. And the eleventh verse says, Therefore we also pray always for you, that our God would count you worthy of this calling, and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness, and the works of faith with power. So that's what he was telling, that you are all saved, and you are all waiting for the Lord to come. And how what the God is kept for you, it's something great that you cannot expect. So you are what about you should be a worthy of the calling. What the God is calling that you should be worthy of this calling. And fulfill the good pleasure of the goodness and the work of faith with power. We say that we received the Holy Spirit. So where is the deed from the Holy Spirit in our life? How that we can be. So what is the, you know, for the God's, this one, what we do for Him. Church in the church, coming and preaching is very easy. You know. Or some other things, worshipping is very easy, nothing at all. But about that, the thing is, what did we do for God? And bringing the souls what we have been called for, the calling is for, that is for bringing souls into Christ. And for the calling, that is a calling for the people. So without the work, there was no reward. We may enter into God's kingdom, but where is the reward? Without any work, without work, there is no salary. The God's kingdom, without work, there is no reward. But it doesn't mean that, you know, you will enter because you are saved, everything was saved. But again it says, when there is no fruit in you, the axe is kept at the root of the tree, and it will be cut and put it in the fire as though when there is 
God doesn't find any fruits in us, the same thing happens 